Andre, we mentioned the fact that Brisbane could go into the top four with a win tonight. The other side of the coin is they could also fall out of the, the eighth. Could be ninth by Tuesday morning if the other results go various ways. As we get underway with Moy Moy hitting it up. Moy Moy met just outside his 10 metre line. It was a good, savage tackle. Followed by a very good chase. It was Mitchell Dodds, the number 16, in the main. Parramatta then just inside their 20 metre line with Horro. And now Nathan Kalis getting his uh, presence from uh, Brisbane for the 217th captaincy. They go quickly across to Mateo and away to Reddy. Joel Reddy is tackled on his own 30 metre line. Round 23 of the Telstra Premiership and D-Day for Parramatta. It is a, a night, as Peter just pointed out, it could be a dramatic night for Brisbane if they're beaten, though, as Hayne puts more or less a chip kick across the ground and finds the line on the Brisbane 40-metre line. Just looking at Joel Reddy playing at left centre. I can't remember too many times seeing him play on the left. Jonathan Wright comes into the side. He moves into the right slot alongside Luke Burt. Joel Reddy, that's a change for mine. Already a big change this week with Daniel Morton being rested by the coach. He said the young fella was showing signs. The fuel tank was on empty and needed the break. And here is Parramatta in their biggest game. Wallace goes away to Gillette. Playing 5 eighths tonight. And Israel Folau, who's being marked up by Joel Reddy, plays the ball 40 out, middle ground. Yeah, I was just about to say maybe that is the reason we see Joel on that side is to avoid Jonathan Wright up against Israel, who's got five tries his last three games. He's got 19 from 16 games this year, so he's been on fire. Already a bit more experienced in that department. Played by Mitchell Dodds through Peter Wallace, finding Ben Teo. He's got the number 10 on his back for the first time in a run on side. Here's Wallace again, just having a look around. And it almost reaped a very big reward. The gap nearly opened, but Kalis closed it. Now McCulloch puts a kick over to Inu. They let it bounce. Did it come off the boots of Inu? He's offside, it's a penalty. He's offside, Joel Reddy, it's a penalty. So you're saying that it comes off the boots of Inu, why didn't Inu catch it? There it is, it's right in his lap. Why didn't he just put his hands out and catch it? It's a very good question. But that's exactly what happened. He's allowed the ball to bounce on his feet and then bounce up to a player in an offside position. Now Fide. Five metres out from the line of the Broncos pressing hard. Wallace through, Gillette, or Gillette on. And coming in, Hoffman, out it goes now. And it's with well, Winterstein. After Alex Glenn came in, and they go to within about a metre. Hoffman played the ball, Glenn passed it. Gillette throws it on. Wallace is with the ball, does a circle, comes back. Then he runs into Gillette. And he'll play the ball 15 away from the Parramatta line. Parramatta at the moment paying the penalty for the penalty, a rather stupid penalty, really. Shane Tronk, 10 metres out from the line. Andrew McCulloch, a little kick came off Parramatta. Did they play at the ball? McCulloch has got the ball. He started the tackle count again. So McCulloch. Plays it back for Parker. Now it's with Tronk. And he got a ball away when going to ground. Good ball. Now it's with Parker. And Parker is held and got the ball away. They'll run out of numbers shortly in a moment. Falau is with it now. A couple of extra phases promoted by Tronk and Parker. Played by Falau. McCulloch goes deeper. Wallace goes wider, Gillette is there, but Tio ran him out of space, or he ran Tio out of space. And they're 12 metres out from the line. And the lack of a Darren Lockyer already apparent as Tio goes ahead, intercepted by Jonathan Wright. He played the ball on his own 20 metre line. Luke Burke goes for another half scurry. No markers. And Glenn came up from the 10 metre line. Now for Moimoy. 
And he'll tackle, he'll take the tackle inside the 40 metre line. Keating got it away. Nathan Kalis goes ahead and they spear him into the ground. Right on halfway. And Matthew Keating opts to go to the right side to Robson to give it in to Horro. And Horro will play the ball on tackle number five. 40 away from the line. Hayne comes up on the short side and drills it into touch. And an understandable tactic there. A lot of tackling practice early for Parramatta. It's amazing how one little incident can impact. And it was just a lack of confidence on the far side from Kristen Inu and Joel Reddy not to catch the football. It was close to the, the sideline, so there might have been a fear that they'd be taken over if they did catch it. And in the end, Jonathan Wright came up with a very timely intercept. Jared Hayne opts to give his team a rest. Wallace working the scrum back inside his own 20 metre line. Broncos now with Glenn playing the ball and then through to Falau and he got through Chris Keating. He just managed to ankle tap him on the way through. McCulloch on for Thiday for Parker and Parker has tackled 35 metres out from the Brisbane line. They're defending the Milton Road end of the ground and this is Shane Tronk who takes it up towards halfway. The ball is gone. Advantage Parramatta. Robson, no, that was a heavy hit on right from Ben Teo. And now it's Horror who tries to take some advantage of the quick changeover of possession. Matthew Keating to Nathan Kalis. Back it goes to Robson, now to Chris Keating. And Keating will play the ball on the second, middle of the ground. Matthew Keating for Fui Fui Moi Moi. He's tackled on the 20 metre line. It was a desperate tackle by Shane Tronk. Robson goes away. Hayne comes in, turns the ball inside. Jonathan Wright towards the middle of the ground. He's seven metres out from the line. Left side looks light on for Brisbane. It's gone that way. Chris Keating has gone on to Mateo. And Mateo is pulled out by Gillette on tackle number five. So Reddy goes back to the boot of Keating. He puts it across and Hayne is up there. He gets a bat on it. He got the hands on it. He got a try out of it. Maybe, maybe he's got a try, and I'll tell you what, if he has, well, even if he hasn't, it's one of the best juggling performances you've ever seen. Well, he can do some freakish things, this young man. And he's scored some amazing tries over the last four or five weeks. He's onside. It's a flat kick from Chris Keating. He jumps between defenders. He touches it. It doesn't touch anybody else. And we'll get an angle of whether he plants the football down despite the attention of Peter Wallace. If he has, it will be a try. And he has. Oh, that is just absolutely freakish. That is freakish from the freak. Jared Hay. Try. to this incredible football. As we welcome our audiences taking the telecast around uh, the rugby league community. And Jared Hayne has done it again. Coming into tonight, Jared Hayne had scored eight tries from his last five games. It's nine from six as Luke Byrne attempts conversion down at the southern end of the ground. It's 6-0. What about that, Gus? Well, just have a look at this again and marvel not only at the athleticism to get up in the air the way he does, but then the juggling act as you described. Right hand, tips of the fingers, catch it, and then with the left hand extended. So he had to flick it up with the right hand, get it in two hands, now put it in one hand to avoid the attention of Peter Wallace and plant it down on the ground. That's brilliant. And you don't coach that. No one can coach that into a player. That's just instinct. Moy Moy was strong. 
Kalis is now playing the ball. You would have heard the ref say to Fui Fui. Fui put a foot on it. He's talking about the play the ball. Other members of those that teach the rules, though, will tell you as long as you look as though you're playing the ball, that'll do. But now Tony Arch is telling Moy Moy, put a foot on it, please. Now it's gone away to Justin Horro, and he gets the ball back to Wright. And Wright tries to find a crack. Almost succeeds in doing so. He'll play the ball 28 away on the last. Now Matthew Keating stabs a kick into the corner. They're looking for a repeat set, but it was just too deep. And will come out to the 20 for the restart. You know, in the set of six leading up to that try by Jared Hayne, I was sitting here watching him, and he was just wandering around and sauntering around, and I thought, gee whiz, it's an important game. You've got to get yourself involved. And then all of a sudden on tackle five, he produces that. We see the brilliant things, but I think he would be so much better if he was more energetic at times. Boy, boy, called offside. You would have heard that again from the referee with the control of the game at the moment. That's Falau, and it's a penalty to Brisbane. Fui, according to him, according to him, two tackles in a row. That's about the fourth time I've caught him. He's got to get back, mate. Well, you heard it again there from Tony Archer telling the captain, Nathan Carlos, hey, don't blame me. I, I've told him. Four times I've told him. So it's really not Tony Archer's fault. He gave him every opportunity. He doesn't have to call him, of course, but he did. So 6-0 Parramatta, and here is a man that could well be defined as the best player this year. Sam Thider. Now Corey Parker. Taken by Chris Keating, flicks it out the back for Thigh Day. But they're working in heavy traffic. Moy Moy is working on Thigh Day to get into the ground. So McCulloch now to Wallace. Wallace on. Gillette with the ball. In and away. Got it back to Hoffman. And they make the tackle. Parramatta out on the 20 metre line. Jonathan Wright did the job. Now Gillette goes to the blind side himself. And he'll play the ball 10 metres away from the line. This fellow Jonathan Wright. He hasn't let Parramatta down on the times they've called him into the action. Tahu out again tonight. And here's Tronk feeding a ball out the back. And uh, it'll be played there by the 16, which is Mitchell Dodds. So Brisbane on the last, and Wallace goes to Inu and Reddy, and they're having a go at it this time. And Reddy has got the ball after losing it backwards. There might have been a knock-on in there from Israel for now as well as Chris Inu earns his side of penalty. Catches him inside the 10. And Ray Hills leading 6-0, you notice that the, the Parramatta team wearing black armbands tonight as we see them get the football back. But during the week, one of the great club stalwarts, Norm Sivia. We all knew him as Bubbles, passed away. 79 years of age, he, he'd been part of the club for over 40 years and done absolutely everything. And, it was one of the first smiling faces you saw when you walked into any training session or game. So our condolences to his friends and family. Chris Keating going short for Justin Horror. Just want to endorse that remark from Peter. I was good friends with Norm and had a long association with him. And yes, condolences go through to the Sevilla family. Wonderful man. Gave his life to Parramatta Eels. Really, he did. Matthew Keating, Jeff Robson, Justin Horro, now Jonathan Wright. And he'll play the ball 32 metres away from the Brisbane line. Played back to Horro. On it goes to Robson now. Robson puts it high. The chase is not all that good. And Hoffman didn't really have any pressure. But then Hayne. Hayne tangled himself around his leg. Just limps a little bit back into position. That's Yao Yi with the ball. And now Winterstein, and he's pulled down by a hind marsh. Matthew Keating going in to help with Nathan Kalis. Broncos very bunched behind the play the ball here. Look at that one loose pass, and then they gave up possession. But here's a chance for them. They're away down the left side of the ground. Alex Glenn it is, and Glenn is taken eventually by Horror. Well, that was really lucky. That's a fluke. Play back to Tio. Through from Hoffman, onto Wallace. Now to Thiday. Across and over the head of Falau. It's found Yao Yi. Inu has gone around. Oh, Inu's in awful trouble. And Yao Yi 
He beats his opposite number all ends up. Yao Yi has scored for Brisbane. That's a great move by a very talented young winger who's really looked good in the top grade this season. Might have been a fluke, but I, I think that Parramatta had every opportunity to show desperation to dive on that one. And Jonathan Wright probably had the best shot at it. And two tackles later, Brisbane make them pay. One on one, Chris and Inu appeared to have him covered in and away. Fend into the chest. Too good. Gerald Yao Yi scoring for Brisbane. Welcome back to Suncorp on Bundy Red Friday Night Football. And 6 4 the score in favour of Parramatta with Parker to take. The conversion attempt of the Yao Yi try from 23 metres out on the eastern side of the ground. And away it goes, and it's just drifting. So Parramatta holds the lead by two points. Sideline with Wally Lewis tonight. Well, Rams, I've got to say there's some great personal satisfaction in that try for Gerald Yao Yi. He was a guy that tried his heart out to get himself signed by the Parramatta Club. They said, no, we prefer that you didn't come here. He went back, signed with the Brisbane Broncos, and I think that one, that's the try that maybe felt, uh, well, a little bit by Parramatta. Perhaps he could have scored it for us. Luke Burt kicking off, and Shane Tronk running off. Gillette's pass inside their own 20 metre line then Gillette giving it on to Parker and Corey Parker to play the ball under the tackle of Jeff Robson Wallace then using a Tio so Tio just inside the 30 metre line played back to McCulloch and he sweeps it away on the blind side to Alex Glenn who was the man that made all those metres for them and Parker it is now tackled by Moi Moi and also Hein Marsh as they drill it down the middle of the ground. It bounces up favorably for Hay. And they put a line of defenders down the ground pretty quickly. And Falau eventually struggles to stop Hay. Played on the 30 meter line then. Inu comes in, fends away one, takes the tackle, passes. Keating gets it away. Moi Moi standing still. And he'll play the ball on the 30 metre line, his own end of the ground. Tackled by Tio and Parker. Matthew Keating then for Horro. He goes away from Fide, away from Dodds. He comes to Gillette. He didn't make any progress, but he certainly was covering a lot of metres, crabbing across the ground. Now Kalis draws them and then gets the ball away. It's gone back to Mateo. It's found Reddy. Reddy looks for an opening, but Brisbane shoulder to shoulder defence out there and played on the halfway line referee telling them to get back the 10 gone away to robson gone on now to moi 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 comes to the 5 8 and here's right not tackle comes again on the hurdy-gurdy gets the ball away robson on the 40 meter line he's done better than that he'll play the ball just outside 30. so the last tackle then for Parramatta with ben tio slow to get up chris keating jared hayne comes into the attack Turns the ball away to Fellini Matteo. He's got the ball in one hand, but he's given it to a Brisbane player, Hoffman. And Hoffman plays it for the Broncos. Gerald Hayne, he just stands back, waits his opportunity. Well, it was a very low percentage set from Parramatta, but I guess that's the way they like to play. A lot of passes, not much forward movement. All of a sudden, someone's in some space. Passes go to ground, they're in all sorts of trouble, but we just saw in that set of six how dangerous they can be. Some space here for Hoffman. Hoffman herded back in towards the middle by Jeff Robson going up on his outside. McCulloch now for Wallace, and Wallace puts a big kick down into Inu's corner. And Inu coming away from the in goal. 
Remy's back there. Where well, Remy throws the dummy, and he's able to be tackled 25 metres out. Eventually, it was a great run by Chris Naninu. Now ready to the line, finds Burt, and he's taken by Tio. Play back to Keating, and then Caleb loses his footing, gets it back to Keating, gets away from Tio, double pumps the ball before finding Matteo! Matteo's into space! He's got one in front of him, over the 30-metre line, and they pick him off in defence. Wonderful tackle, Hoffman. Matthew Keating to Chris Keating, and away then to Jeff Robson. My boy knocks on! My boy knocking on down on the Brisbane 20. Yes, a forward standing out wide when you want him to be somewhere else. As my old coach used to say, it's a trombone in the violin section. They're out there playing beautiful music, and all of a sudden you throw it to the bloke with a big fuzzy hairdo, and he puts it down. Look at this, all, all lined out. All the speed men are there, and the big front rower gets in the way and fluffs it, and the coach says, get out of the string section, please. Sunday football, uh, one of the big games of the year. The Battle of the Cats, the Tigers and the Panthers. From Campbelltown on Sunday at 4 o'clock, you'll see the game. 3 o'clock kickoff. Tigers up against Panthers. Battling for the top four. They want home ground. They realise the importance of CUA or maybe Campbelltown. Toyota Cup tonight, Broncos 46, Eels 18. 46-18. Broncos beating the Eels. This is Wallace. That'll be an absolute delta on Sunday. I'm so much looking forward to that game. The Tigers and the Panthers. Parker to the halfway line. There, taken by Heinmark. Sunday afternoon footy in the Golden West. It's a beauty. Josh Maguire has gone on for Brisbane. It's him playing the ball. Ten metres into Parramatta's half. And Peter Wallace again. Putting it down to Chris Naninu. He could well be saying, there is another winger in the side. Why don't you go to him just occasionally? This is ready. Yeah, he's heart attack material, Chris Naninu. The offload there, it's, it's not needed in that situation. Joel Reddy wasn't going anywhere. Peter, it's the second time he's done it. He's, he's, he hasn't played to the ball that ended up a penalty. He's missed the tackle on Gerald Yoye. I just watched him when Mateo broke through. He didn't support. He looks like he wants to be anywhere else bar here at Suncorp Stadium tonight. I hate to be critical of players, but you know, it's a team game. You need everyone with their shoulder to the wheel, and he's not here at the moment. Well, especially when you're as talented as what he is, as Justin Poor gets driven back. Well, he's got his second set of front rowers out there now, and Poor and Manor have been good. And Hain it is. Oh, he's put this so high down to Yao Yi, and he does well. And eventually Inu it is that makes the tackle on Yao Yi. Hoffman then darts away. These kids are only 20, 21. They are young. It'll be interesting to see how they handle it down the back end of the game if the scores are close. Usually they've got the old master there, Darren Lockyer, to lead the way. I'm just wondering if the teacher leaves the classroom, how the kids will play. So Wallace finding Maguire now. Well, it's my experience that the teacher leads the classroom, the kids play up. Well, we'll wait and see. Parker, taken by Horro, got a ball back inside for Wallace, and Wallace looking to pass himself, but Heinmarsh and Robson put him away on five tackles. They're only 35 out from their own line, Brisbane, so that wasn't such a good set for them, or was it a good set defensively for Parramatta? Here's Inu with the ball, and brushing away from a couple of would -bees. No gaining ground, he'll play the ball seven metres his side of halfway. This is the second now on the set, and ready to the halfway line. A matter of only used 25 players this year. Only club to have used lesser, a lesser amount of players, being Manly with 23. Because that means probably one of two things. You've had a good run with injuries, or you've got nobody better to go to. So played then by Jonathan Wright, and then Robson turns it in for Tim Manor. And Manor is up towards the 20 metre line. Last tackle then for Parramatta. And it's gone to the middle to Robson. He had Mateo with him. They didn't know what they were doing eventually. And Friday turns them around. 
He'll play the ball on the 30 metre line. Hoffman brings it away towards the 40. Yeah, young Hoffman, he's already had eight touches with the ball compared to Jared Haynes, too. I mean, if Jared Hayne played with the same intensity and enthusiasm as a Hoffman, I guess the game wouldn't be fair, but it just shows that one fullback's really into the match and the other one's just sitting back biding his time. This is Josh McGuire. And a penalty goes to Brisbane. Three in a row, slowing it up. Too slow in the getting up uh, area is the ruling. And the Broncos need to straighten their attack up a little bit. When Darren Lockyer is here, he's very selective about the number of times they actually spread the ball sideline to sideline. He likes those little inside passes and some plays around the play the ball area. Tonight, they've been a bit sideline to sideline rather than chipping away around the play the ball area looking for an opportunity. Let's see what they do with this set. So they're 12 metres away from the line after Winterstein's contribution. Here's Wallace and going away to Gillette behind Friday, picks up Hoffman, puts a little kick in, Parramatta ball, Chris Keeney. See, that's exactly it. Once they ran out of room there, the kids in the classroom started to play up. They didn't have the right option at their disposal. They went sideline to sideline on play two. Well, that's a horrible option. It was only the second tackle. He's a good young player, Corey Norman, and he has played at 5'8 for Darren Lockyer in the two games that... The skipper has missed, but he'd like that one back. Mateo through again. And he's gone to the halfway, and it's been taken by Falau. So Parramatta are passing to the wrong players. Now Heimars is pointing to Manor. Stay out, stay out. And Manor responds. Mateo keeps breaking through. Hunt gets the ball on the inside. It's Scott Anderson out there for Broncos in 17. Now Gillette again. Wide to Wallace in the middle, the pass into Hoffman. It was only just okay. And Hoffman plays it back to Hunt. Now to Wallace, and Wallace goes short to Maguire. And he'll play the ball. Two metres out from the Parramatta line. Brisbane crowd, baying for a penalty. It's with Gillette now, Parramatta. They're not going to come up and take him, so he dances around them now. Passes from the ground, but he didn't have a hand on him, so that's okay. Hoffman's with the ball, back to the middle, and he's 10 metres away from the Parramatta line. Back for Hunt, now for Wallace, he kicks to Inu and ready again. Soon there's going to be a problem. Knock on in goal. Line dropout. Well, again, not a really convincing set of six from the Broncos. They got the ball courtesy of an intercept and they had the Parramatta defence all over the place. But when it came to the crunch, they were still sideways, passes out the back that weren't on. Here's the contest for the ball. There's Inno knocking on. Can't be offside in your own in goal, so Keating's not penalised. It's a line dropout against Parramatta. I, I don't want to say it, Rabbits. When I was coaching, I had a big stick with a hook on it and a pretty pink bow. If I had the hook tonight, I'd be getting Christian in there off the field. He's contributing nothing at the moment. That's a mighty drop kick. It's huge, isn't it? Yeah. And that was in there as Maguire brings it back. Was it Hayden? It was Hayden. No, I think it was in there. Was it in there? Okay. So this is Glenn with the ball now. And all of this pressure coming from the Mateo break and wayward pass. So Hunt has replaced McCulloch. Anderson has gone on. Shane Tronk and Mitchell Dodds. The starting props are off. Wallace goes back for Teo, and Teo has scored a treble of tries through this year in one game. Plays the ball eight metres away. Corey Parker. And good defence, Jeff Robson. Over the top, Hindmarsh. Hunt to the middle. Wallace to the right boot, and again he goes to Inno. They're up there. They're, this is not offside again. It's Reddy who's got the ball. It should be a knock on in goal and a line dropout. Hey, just remember what Phil said you can't be offside in your own in goal. You can be penalised for throwing the ball forward. Well, again, it's a, a Parramatta knock on ruled. Chris Inu standing his ground. Gee, Gerald Yao Yi looked like he had a play on it. And 
I think it's I think it's a tough call against Parramatta. Well, he gets tackled in goal anyway, Peter. So it was either knock back for Lau, Parramatta tackled in goal, or it's knock on Parramatta. So it was the same result. Well, I thought it was a knock on Yao Yi. Now it's down to Glenn, 35 away from the uprights. Play the ball to Hunt. Now to Wallace. And short. It goes to Maguire. Josh Maguire, 25 away from the line. Hunt again. Now Wallace again. Here's Parker, driving it in behind the the ruck area. He played the ball on the 20-meter line. Hunt for Wallace. Wallace dummies twice. Goes to Gillette, and Keating is there. The 19 is out there. Lasalo for Parramatta. Here is Wallace turning it into Maguire. Something's got to give soon. Parramatta have been under an avalanche of attack. Played again to Hunt. He puts a kick in, no knock on off the legs. And this is Lozano. Pulled down by Hoffman. Lucky to get away with that. Well, hey now. Had to be a penalty as Hay takes it up the middle. Good defence there again for Parramatta, but again it was a poor kick from Ben Hunt. Peter Wallace was really well positioned to the left with options. Mateo is off. See this tackle count starting to run up for Parramatta. They've made 135 tackles to Brisbane's 89. The other key stat is tackled inside the opposition 20. The Broncos have had 21 play the balls close to the Parramatta line. Parramatta's only had three, yet still lead the game. So Robson to Keating, he kicks. Lasalo's after it, but Hoffman has got the ball safely, and Lasalo makes the tackle. And just on that tackle count, Nathan Hindmarsh already 33 tackles. The nearest to him is Jeff Robson with 19. Wally Lewis sideline. Well, I've got to say that the Broncos must be thinking about making a change and bringing Corey Norman on to play 5-8. They've spent most of this half camped on the Eels uh, goal line ready to be able to throw something at them but there just doesn't seem to be enough belief in the Broncos attack at the moment to be able to make it a little more dangerous here it is to Parker he looks back on the inside he looks back and finds Hoffman Hoffman over the halfway line and he's pulled down by Justin Poor and Hunt goes away to Wallace and Wallace with a stabbing kick down into Inu's corner it'll go dead well, that's probably nearly the best result Christmas has had down there in that corner. Daniel Anderson under pressure in more ways than one. We're learning reports that Parramatta may have been talking to Stephen Kearney from the Melbourne side. And they wouldn't be talking to him about salary cap matters or things like that. But they're the stories that are abounding here at Suncorp tonight, played by Lasalo. Now to Hindmarsh, to the halfway line on the centre of the ground. Matt Keating ducks away, takes Justin Poor with him. It's a cutthroat business, this coaching, isn't it? Parramatta gets the penalty. Against Maguire, and Sam Fiday still on the ground. And now's Parramatta opportunity. Parramatta's opportunity to exert some pressure of their own. Sam Friday still lying down next to the referee. They'll find touch in great attacking position. At the end of the set of six, they haven't scored again. You'd be looking to roll it in the in goal area and get the opposition tackle count up, which they've been unable to do tonight. And that responsibility falls back to Jeff Robson and Chris Keating. Friday, as you can see, flexing his left his left hand. It's an injury probably higher up. He never looked like getting up. In, in fact, Tony Archer walked up and leant over him and said, are you OK? And Sam was lying there. Now I'd say he's got a burner down the left arm, bit of a pinched nerve in the neck or back. It gives you a bit of a fright. But you sort of lay there and make sure everything's working and the pain goes away and up they get and play on. They're tough boys. He's had a remarkable season, Sam Thayde. Big turnaround in his career from when he first started. Tim Manor with the ball. And there he is straight into the first tackle. 
12 away from the line, 7 away from half time. Justin Poor. And he's a couple of metres out from the line. Parramatta running this up. Matt Keating has a dig from Dummy Half. He didn't make it. And it's a penalty. The Sam Thido's made three tackles in a row. And he was the one down injured holding up the game because he got a neck injury. He's just made three in a row. So Tim Manor there. Tackled on the first. And Matt Keating goes to his brother Chris. Now for Robson and then Hiro away for Jonathan Wright. Keeps it alive fortuitously for Parramatta. Jeff Robson arrived in the nick of time. Horro goes back in to Keating. Now to Hindmarsh. Where is Hay? He's out. Out the back and joining in on the left side now. But Brisbane did well to slow the play down. Played by Hindmarsh. Chris Keating goes to Jared Hayne. He juggles. He was put down by Gillette and Falau. Played now. Come back for Chris Keating again. He shows it and then he tries to break through. Last tackle, Parramatta. They'll go to Robson, will they? No. Off the back edge and they might get a repeat set. Or will Gillette get back? He's going to get back, is he? Yes. That's a great effort. It's a brilliant effort. What a lot of courage in that run. And it, when he ran it out of the in goal, there was a big chance he could run into the upright if they hit him hard enough. What's the determination here? Just sets his sights on the play. Only a youngster and muscles his way back into the field of play. Falau. And now Hunt out to the 40 metre line. It was a good question you asked during that set of six rabbits. Where's Jared Hayne? It's. It's quite obvious, he's just sauntering around out the back. Just waiting, waiting, thinking, waiting, waiting. He's still waiting. He's waiting for that ball to go dead down there in the northeastern corner, which it does. He's just wandering around. He's, we've all come to watch him play and he's wandering around. Yeah, he's been good, this man carrying the football. Justin Horro starting for Ben Smith and he's, he's worked very, very hard, made some crucial tackles tonight. Time Marsh, who also has worked ridiculously hard. 34 tackles next to his name already. Is Luke Burt. And upended by the 14 Hunt with some assists there from Maguire. Now Chris Keating and now to Lasalo. Parramatta's got the ball, and Jared Hayne has been 30 metres away at the back the whole time. He's now just come up and joined the line. It's tackle five, and they'll kick, and he'll stand back. Chris Keating. Down. Oh, Huffman's put it down. Was he tackled in mid-air? There was a contact. Was the player contesting the leap? Huffman's down. Horro's down in back play. But Archer is calling this zero tackle and play on. That must be Nathan Highmarsh with the football. There's a telltale sign. Yeah. He's hurt too. He's gone down, Nathan Highmarsh. He's gone down. He has gone down. And he uh, never goes down. So it's gone through Robson. It's out to Chris Keating. It's now to the solo. Well, he's been exciting, this fellow. He's only been here five seconds. Now Chris Keating for Tim Manor. Manor's nine metres out. Highmarsh is still down injured. As Hayne joins in now, tries to shoulder away, flick passes. Matt Keating, Chris Keating, Jeff Robson, Justin Hiro, now Jonathan Wright. But Brisbane's defence slides and slides effectively. Hiro again. Back to the middle for Robson. Now for Justin Paul. Three metres out on five. Are they going to Hayne's side of the ground? Yes. Chris Keating cuts him out to Lozalo to Reddy. The ball got knocked down by Brisbane, I think, and they got the ball. Should be a knock-on against them, and it'll be a scrum. Well, the final pass only needed to find Christian Inu, and they would have scored in the corner. But still looks very stilted, the Parramatta defence. They're making it easy for Brisbane to slide because their ball players, there you can see the contact from Yao Yi, the Parramatta ball players aren't going to the line. 
There's too much passing before the line, and that's making it way too easy for Brisbane to defend against. Please hold you, mate. One step. Thanks, mate. Just looking where Jared Hayne positions himself now. He hasn't worked out a position yet. He's sort of wandering across the field. He's at second oh, receiver. Now he's getting some advice off the trainer. Great chance for Parramatta here. Chris Keating. Jeff Robson. John Wright. Eight metres out from the line. Right in the middle of the ground. Matt Keating goes to the left side. Dummies to Paul. Gets a decoy run. Chris Keating likewise. Oh, Hayne has hit Inu. Right smack bang on the sternum. And Inu has scored for Parramatta. Well, here they are. Hayne and Inu. The pair of them have wandered around for 39 minutes and contributed very, very little to the action. And then suddenly on the stroke of half-time, welcome to the party. It's lovely to have you back. Hayne finally joins proceedings, picks up Inu, and Inu scores a crucial try right on the stroke of half-time. On the Kino replay, just watch the vision of Hayne. No look pass. Spiral finds Inu. And the two fellas in yellow boots combine to give Parramatta a healthy half-time lead. Lovely pass. Lovely pass. But I've got to be honest, the pair of them have contributed so little to the physical part of the game. Kristen Inu's been asleep on the left wing. Jared Hayne has hardly joined proceedings at all. He's wandered around sometimes 30 and 40 metres from the play, watching his Parramatta teammates play in front of him. But there you saw it. He obviously knows more than us. He just injected himself and found Inu. And I doubt that Luke Bird will miss this. And they're going to lead 12-4. 30 seconds from half time. So there's Bird, and he's just squeezed it in. So Parramatta will go to the break with an eight-point lead. I'll tell you what, when you look at the pressure they've been under. It's a, it's a wonderful lead for them. Nothing has really stuck for them. They've had opportunities. Brisbane have been getting lost down inside Parramatta's 20-metre line. That doesn't need to be said, but the stats are telling me that quite heavily. Well, that's the other part of it, Ray. The forwards for Parramatta have had to do so much defensive work. You would think that Hayne and Inu and these outside backs would be coming in looking to help them, well, but they haven't. Still, they just produced the points there, and the Eels have a, a handy break. What a, an impressive good kid. Entry into the game, Lasalo. Next in Toyota halftime, Sterlo will join the King, and they'll have their thoughts on the first 40 minutes. We'll bring you the Bundy Smooth Moves as well. This is Friday Night Football on the home of the Olympics, Channel 9. tattoos that are there. I'm, I'm happy with what I've seen. And right, stay with me for a while, unfortunately. So the Parramatta desperate to stay alive in the competition. And uh, they lead by eight points. This is Anderson for Brisbane on the first carry of the second half. Gillette got it away. Maguire takes a hammering over there in the middle of the ground from Justin Horro who's just about been the best for Parramatta. He's been very, very strong. As he has been since he became a regular in the first grade squad for Parramatta this year. It's Alex Glenn playing at 35 metres out from his line. Hunter's the dummy half, Parker is the carrier. And he's down the middle of the ground. Vas not Vasalo, Lasalo. Making the tackle. So off the foot is the call on Inu. He goes running diagonally across towards Hay. It's a very interesting second half coming up here because you know the Broncos won't give up and they will have in the back of their minds that Parramatta's last few weeks in the second halves have been deplorable. Come up with an error here. Parramatta have conceded so many points in the second halves of their games 
in the last fortnight. They need to turn that around. Parramatta, Chris Keating knocking on and inviting Brisbane to have a look at this end of the ground. The southern end. Ball to be played by Maguire. Now Hunt and Wallace catch pass. In ball from Tio for Hoffman. A great pass. And that's a lovely try for Hoffman. But the pass from Ben Tio was classic. Absolute classic. Well, there's two great passes in this, Rabbits. And Tio reacted to the great pass he received from the inside. The Parramatta defence raced up very quickly to put some pressure on here. Here's the turnover with Reddy trying to pop the ball out the back. Knocked on by Keating. But what's the pass here? That one there that provides a little out ball in ball. It was Wallace with really quick hands to Tio, and this fullback Hoffman takes it into the end goal. The Broncos are back. It didn't take them long to get back. The 22 year old Josh Hoffman scoring the try. Lovely ball from Ben Teo, and as Phil said, a catch and pass exhibition from Peter Wallace. He is one hell of a talent, this kid. And when you think of Justin Hodges coming back, and you've got Greg Inglis coming here, it uh, looks something of a rebirth of the Brisbane Broncos. And I say that even looking down the barrel of them making their 19th consecutive finals as Parker converts. Good kick, Captain. A good kick. Wally Lewis, sideline. Well, timing, hands, and a nice sprint is what gained the four, the four points for the Brisbane Broncos. Here's the wide shot. Just have a look at Hoffman. He timed that run perfectly on the Keno replay to be able to, to lead the Eels' defence. Absolutely grabbing at thin air, not even the strength of Jared Hayne could stop him. It was also a try scored by the Parramatta defence, making the decision for them. If Justin Horrell had have stayed back in the line instead of rushing off, there wouldn't have been a hole for Hoffman to run into because that's where he went, through where Horrell had just come up out of the line. Two point ball game now, Parramatta with their nose in front. Brisbane, if they lose, they could. By Monday night, they could be back to number nine. So, as I said, it's a dramatic game for both clubs. But there is no return for Parramatta if they lose. So, Parker to play on the halfway line, centre of the ground. Hunt for Wallace. And Wallace driving it down again into Inu's corner. I think you might be right, Wally. See, where does he think Jared Hayne is going to go from there? I know you like to get the ball back in the centre of the field to cooperate both sides, but it's an unnecessary pass. And if Hayne happens to drop it, it could have been extremely costly. So Hayne is inside his own 20 metre line, and Parramatta seemingly were there for half an hour. But now Justin Paul. Takes it straight ahead, out to the 30 metre line. Matt Keating finding Tim Manor, and Sam Fide. He beats him. He beats two others that were with him. And Tim Manor strong. He'll play the ball eight metres from halfway. Fifth tackle then. As it comes away to Chris Keating, and he gives a good ball to Joel Reddy. There's some space for Inu. He puts a kick down the sideline, but it's out of the full. Come back to around about the 40 meter line. Half time betting with TAB Sports Bet. Broncos $2.10 after being $2.50 at half time. $2.10 now. Parramatta $1.65 after being $1.50 at half time. TAB Sports Bet one double three three nine zero. Think about your choice and gamble responsibly. Is the message from TAB Sportsbet. 30 metres out from their own line, played by Hoffman. It's gone to Parker. And Parker able to unload the ball, and Hunt it is, getting it away, short for Tio. Who's going to be able to just pop those little passes out and provide another phase? 
almost at will. That's Winterstein. In fact, it's Glenn. Now Wallace. An in ball for Parker. And Parker will play the ball just outside the 30 metre line. They haven't seen the lead, Brisbane. Two points behind again as Wallace puts it down to Inu. Oh, ready at Inu and it's gone over the sideline. Well, they've had a bit of good fortune go their way. And they got in Israel Folau's way here. He was running after the ball. He was concentrating so hard on getting around ready that he lost sight of the ball and actually ran past it. It came down behind him. So he's, he's pretty mindful that players don't want him to get there, but I guess he's got to keep one eye on the ball too, so it... At least he knows where it is. Keating feeding the scrum. And his brother at the back of the scrum gives it away to Joel Reddy. So they're outside the 20 metre line as Heinmarsh combines there. And it's a penalty going to Parramatta as Justin Horro has taken high. Ben Teo. The man on camera is the man penalised, that left hand slapping across the side of the cheek. Well, all the energy is with the Broncos since half-time. It's only been eight minutes, but they're the ones that are pumped up and really want to get into their second 40 minutes. Parramatta are waiting for an invitation. They're just sort of sauntering around, and they've taken on the persona of their fullback. He might ignite in a minute, he might not. Played by Justin Poor. Tim Manor to the line, passing in front of the line. Robson, Keating, Keating, Lasalo. He's a good kid, this Lasalo, isn't he? He, he looks lives. good. He really does. Matthew Keating back now for Heinmarsh. And Heinmarsh has the ball wedged against the midriff by Maguire and Teo. Heinmarsh pointing at the marker as it comes to Jonathan Wright and Wright. He runs at Friday and eventually two of Friday's or three of Friday's colleagues put him down just beyond the 20. Chris Keating and he goes back and he finds Hayne. Hayne got rid of one. Fends away from another. They hit him from all uh, all over the ground now. And Hayne will play the ball. 12 metres out from the line. He's not happy, Hayne. Not happy with Josh McGuire. Well, he's got to play the ball. He's got to play the ball. Ready then. Getting it away to Chris Keating. Well, that argument took the sting out of anything they might have had in their mind. And it's a knock-on. It's a changeover. Brisbane's ball. Well, Hayne probably should have been penalised for a slow play of the ball. Let's see what happens here in the tackle. He's got the ball. Doesn't matter what they do to you. You've got to get up and play it and play on to your team. But he gets up and wants to carry on and takes a good 10 or 15 seconds with everyone here at the ground waiting to see whether or not he wants to play on play then by Anderson Friday dummies and then dry, tries to go Corey Norman now out there for Brisbane has his Nathan Kalis for Parramatta as Hunt it's a bit mixed up makes it to his own 40 Here's Parker taking the markers on, and Lasalo makes the tackle. No gain in ground. Norman is playing in that jumping up a six. And Wallace got a kick away. It's gone out on the full. I was wondering about a late tackle on the kicker. But that's not coming. It's a changeover. Alan yeah. Shortle really had the call on that one. He got himself in a bit of a bind there. He's in bad position on tackle five. And... He changed his mind whether to kick left or right. In the end, kicked it out on the full. Good opportunity here for Parramatta. Look at that enthusiasm with Horro. Every time he catches the ball and runs, there was this huge amount of exuberance. And here's Chris Keating into the backfield. Still going. Passes. Find Reddy. And Joel Reddy has scored after Chris Keating found the back. And that's what Chris Keating is capable of. He plays with a lot of energy. And he saw the gut appear for him and he took it. And I like the fact he pinned his ears back and went for it himself once he got through as well. 
Didn't worry about support until the death. And Joel Reddy back on the inside. Hits back. Attempt conversion of the try scored by Joel Reddy after a break made by Chris Keating. And Parramatta now go out again to that six point lead. Here's Burt. Oh, it's a lovely kick. Straight between the big sticks. Comment sideline, Wally Lewis. Well, by the time he got on the football field, it took him 50 minutes to get on onto the park tonight, Corey Norman. But the Keno replay just shows he just held off. There was a wonderful run across field from Chris Keating, just trying to tempt the defence to hang off. That's exactly what they did. Great support play, and Brisbane now certainly have to produce their best. So Parramatta now on the kick return, and that's Justin Poor. That's a good effort to get it back to the 20 metre line from the kickoff. With Nathan Kalish taking it out towards the 30 metre line. Now Nathan Highmarsh. And taken down by Gillette and Parker. Wallace piling on the top. Horro again. His father's a very good player. Justin Horro, Mark Horro, Kiwi International. David Parramatta is. Keating goes flat to Nathan Kale as he takes it halfway, centre field. Kick is both left and right, and left and right footed. 18 10 then in favour of Parramatta as Hayden punches his ball down. And Yagi leaves the ground to mark it. And he runs into Lasalo. Just outside the 20 metre line, find a look to the. Uh, oh, I think Parramatta's got this ball. Archer said play on, Lasalo has got the ball. Sam was just trying too hard. Kalis, Robson, ball to ground, picked up by Wright. And Jonathan has his legs taken by Alex Glenn and plays it to Matthew Keating. Here's Heinmarsh driving it towards the middle of the ground. 15 metres away. They're running up towards the Caxton Street end now. And here is Poor again. And Gillette is there. Desperate defence then from him and Hunt. Played back for Keating. Now to Robson. Now to Hay. Had to reach back for it. Got rid of Wallace. Wallace comes again with Tio. Four tackles gone for Parramatta. Play over in the northeastern corner. As Chris Keating goes to Nathan Kalis, and Kalis is able to hit and spin. Robson away, Heinmarsh around, Keating running around, puts a kick in, goes back and is picked up there by Heinmarsh. And he starts the tackle count again. He heard the call in Nathan Heinmarsh, he was going to pick it up on the run, but dived on it as soon as he heard that his side was getting a full set. Played by Lasalo again. Keating to Poor, and Poor to Kalis! Puts it down! Hoffman goes away. Horro comes out of the line Zero. and makes Don't the tackle. Yeah, this is Tio now with the ball. Starting to get willing now, isn't it? You see a bit more physical contact, a bit of urgency from both sides. Winterstein taken high. They needed that, the Broncos. They've really struggled to get out of their own end the last couple of sets of six. And Starting to look at each other and ask who's going to lead the way. His Lordship, Darren Lockie, is not there tonight. Someone's got to take control here and steer them in the right direction. So Gillette taking the tap and Winterstein it is. He takes it ahead. Right on the halfway line. As Wallace goes short to Anderson down the middle. 
Wilson to play it to the starting dummy half, McCulloch. Now for Fide. And again the arm free, but he, he didn't unload that time. McCulloch goes away to a running Parker. Parker away to Wallace. He might have gone around behind one of his own here. 12 metres out from the line. Now McCulloch and goes to Glenn on a very narrow blind side. And it is changeover Parramatta. Gee, that's a poor final play. There was no room down a short blind side there on tackle five. You've got Falau on the other side of the field waiting for a, a cross field kick. And the Broncos go left. That's a poor decision. Heinmarsh has got Fide on him. Heinmarsh plays it on the 20 metre line. Here's Kalis. He's out to the 30. We've got to do something about Nathan Heinmarsh's shorts. We, we've got to find a way to keep his shorts up. Braces? Well, I don't know, but we can't have them down around his knees all the time. We get the feeling that Fui Fui Moi Moi might be needed by Parramatta shortly just to, to up their tempo. Here's Mateo going back in field. Great oh, ball. got it away to Hayden. Hayden is flying down the middle. He puts in a cross kick. He gets a regather. He puts the ball down. Oh, my goodness gracious, man. This is just incredible again. <laughs> Adjectives. Oh, no, we've run out of them. <laughs> He's been wandering around, doing next to nothing all night. He's had a couple of touches, scored a try, produced a try, and now, out of nowhere, the first time he's really supported someone else's run, he gets a pass off Mateo, bursts into the backfield, chip kicks, scoops it up off the ground, and he'll pull his way into the end goal. Can he get it over his shoulder and onto the ground? Uh -huh. Oh, he's dropped it. He's dropped it. Gee, that's, uh, that's been an inspiring effort by Winterstein. He's dropped it. It was always an awkward one once he was on his back because your elbow gets in the way and you can't get it down to the ground. See, his elbow hits the ground. And it's hard to get it back there. You've got to twist your body and he loses it. Well, this will be an interesting decision as to whether it's been dislodged by the Brisbane player. I don't care if it has. And then it's grounded by Jared Hay. Well, if they give him a try here, gee whiz. Well, that's what they're going to do. They're going to say it was stripped by the, the Brisbane player, I think. That's not football. That's not football. That's not football. He's saving the try. Winnerstein, he's gone in to make the tackle. Haynes trying to put that down. He's knocked it out of his own hand. He knocked it out of his right hand with his left hand, is what he's done. And I, and I said, it's awkward. Once you get on your back there and you're trying to score over your shoulder, he's got the ball in his right arm, his left arm comes over and knocks it out of his own arm for mine. No try. I think they're going to go the other way. No, you're right. No try. He did it to himself. And it was bad luck because it was such brilliant footy. But Jared Hayne... And I don't care if the Bronco player does strip it off him because he's, he's trying to save a try. But let's look at the brilliance. Into the backfield he comes. Chip kick. Regather. Forces his way into the in goal. Now watch as his right arm has the ball. And he's trying to get it over his shoulder. His left arm will come over and knock it out. He did it to himself. I think you'll find that... Sean Hampstead has... has viewed that Winterstein did dislodge it, but then Hay knocked it on himself. So there's no doubt they were looking at giving the try, but then I think in the final analysis they have declared that Hay knocked it on himself. Oh, I think it's ridiculous in the process of trying to save a try. If you can dislodge the ball from the opposition player, then he should get another go at it. It is now up above the pack down at the other end of the ground. Incidentally, all of this has been going. Anthony Mitchell is out there now for Parramatta. This is the youngster that we read so much about. He's out there in jumper number 21. There's Mateo, who's been absolutely brilliant in patches. And this is Inu. And he'll play the ball 35 metres out from his own line. 
This young fellow that you're going to see a bit of, Mitchell, comes from the Brothers Club in Townsville. Here he is with the ball now. And there he goes away to Robson and back for Horro. And Horro has his legs taken by Gillette on the fifth tackle. Out goes the ball to Chris Keating. He puts it down the ground for Hoffman. He's been great at the back, Hoffman. And he'll play it out on his 30-meter line. Tackler over there is Wright. And that's Winterstein, again taken by Wright. Mitchell getting involved in the tackle. He's only 85 kilos. And uh, Brisbane are eight meters short of halfway. So McCulloch, now it goes through Norman to Friday. It's 18 to 10. It could have been another six. It could have been. Now, Wallace, he puts it down towards Hain. Running away, he's got Burt with him. And he comes outside his own 10 metre line and Wallace is there to shut the door. And then to make sure that it's firmly locked, he's dived on by Tio. Here's right. He might have gone too far the other way tonight, Jared Hayne, but I'm a less is more with Jared, to be honest. I think he gets in the way of the halves way too often. Gets in at first receiver, second receiver and passes. I like him to be a, a shock weapon as boy boy, another shock weapon takes it forward. I'd rather see less touches, but in the right place and at the right time as Mateo inside to Inu. Inu throws the dummy, then he throws that pass that is the one that has us having heart attacks. Mitchell got a ball away to Hain! And it's a desperate tackle from Alex Glenn and Peter Wallace. Played by Hain, gets up arguing about the tackle. Robson chips, Thayday covers up. And Thayday gets rid of Horro. Mitchell goes in to make a tackle with uh, Jonathan Wright's assistance. Then they form up as markers. Brisbane not happy. They don't believe they were ever square. Played by Winterstein. Glenn it is. Over halfway. And 18 to 10. Into the final quarter of the game. Peter Wallace drifting across. Picking up Norman. And Corey Norman, the 18-year-old. Playing the ball on the 40-metre line. Hoffman short. Parker a fend on Moimoy. Then he's able to pass. Wallace is in the middle of the ground. He puts a short ball back for Trump. Trump comes to Kalis. Heinmarsh is there. Oh, there he is again, Trump. Getting the ball away. And here's another phase. Wallace is away. Hain to beat. Gets it away to T.O. T.O. scores for Brisbane. It all comes back to not shutting the ball down on Shane Trump. They've made a habit of it tonight. Well, it's an outstanding offload from a man who came back from the English Super League and basically got off the plane to play first grade for his new club. Back on the inside, let's see how many attracts. There's one there, there's two, three comes in, four was standing around, and then Peter Wallace straight into the gap off the Corey Parker pass, and a select one on to Ben Teo, and he's a try scorer as well this season. Talking to Andrew Johns uh, just earlier today, he asked me to send a, a message of condolence to Paul Cullen, a, a good close mate of Andrew's, the Warrington legend who coached and played at Warrington. Chris, his wife, passed away during the week and Andrew wanted to extend his deeper sympathy to Paul, Joshua and Scott. So, back at Suncorp, Bentio has scored yet another try, making a bit of a habit of it. He's a good player, formerly was with the Tigers. They'd love to have him now, wouldn't they, the Tigers? So near the sideline, the kick is away. Corey Parker unable to grab the extra two. It's a four-point ball game now. And again, Ramos, I don't want to be picking on Jared Hayne because he's such a great player, but 
He gets himself out of position. Look at the gap in behind the defence there. See where that second referee is? That's where you want your fullback defending. And Haynes back near his goalpost. He's not going to stop anything back there if they break through. If he's up in the play and behind the line and close enough in defence, he grabs Wallace before he can run far enough to link with supports. I don't want to pick on him, but he's frustrating me, Rabbits. He's great, but he's got a lot to learn. This is Shane Tronk. You're hearing me, Rabbits? Of course I'm hearing you. You've been on it all night, and I'm hearing you, and you, you, you're right. He wanders and saunters, but then he makes some of the more fabulous injections that you'll ever see in the game of rugby league. Absolutely, but I've got concussion. I'm banging my head on the table here all night watching him play. And you can't afford to do that, really. You can't damage what, what looks you've got left. So stop bashing your head on the table. Played then by Gillette. Wallace on. Uh, Norman across. Falau with the ball. Reddy's got him. The bloke that gets his job done professionally. Joel Reddy. Now Norman puts a high kick down to Hay. Go on, you're busting to say something, say something. No, I'm just saying, Falau had a chance to pass there, but really backed his ability to get round Reddy. Had he passed to his winger and then backed up, there was a chance for them. Reddy did a real good job on him to get him one-on-one. -on -one. And I think that surprised Israel Falau. He fancied his chances. Talking of Ben Teo, talking of the Tigers. A big match on Sunday. And isn't it a big match? I mean... It's feasible that the loser of this will lose their home ground advantage in the semis in the first weekend. Four o'clock, you'll see it. And, of course, immediately following this game tonight, you'll see the replay of the Sharks and the Roosters from down in Sydney. That kick is going to find touch just outside 20. That's a very good kick there, too, from Anthony Mitchell. On the back of those points from Ben Teo, Brisbane have gone up a gear. Parramatta. Let's see how desperate they are with 14 minutes to go, knowing that they cannot afford to lose this game. They've got to match what Brisbane are throwing at them and find a little bit more. See, if they do make 30, they probably will make the eight. Hold your voice, hold Firstly, they've got to win this one tonight, and then it's very possible. It's the Tigers at home, Rabbitohs away, and Warriors at home. And if Brisbane were to lose and go back to ninth, say, on Monday, their run home is nights away, Warriors away, and Raiders at home. Well, one of the advantages for Brisbane at the moment is that they have a good differential, Parramatta minus 70 coming into this game, but obviously if you win four in a row, that would improve. That could be their Waterloo peak. This is Tronk. Well, they've shut him down this time. The big fellow, I'm starting to think it was Arthur Beetson out there. Here's Peter Wallace, taken by Moy Moy. And McCulloch just goes out a couple of paces, finds Norman, finds Thiday. And to ground on the 30-metre line, Parramatta's in. And McCulloch puts one, a chip into the corner, needs some urgency. And Hayne is there. Play to Inu. And they tried to steal it. Yeah, and that's a penalty for a two-man tackle and a strip. I was about to say, Inu wants to protect that football. Well, he because didn't that was on then, the strip, but two men got involved in the tackle. Well, he's lucky there because he had a very loose grip on that. Very lucky. Now the betting with TAB Sports Bet. 260 Broncos. 145 the Eels. Only lead by four Parramatta, but still a short price. Think about your choice and gamble responsibly on 13390. Chris Keating, Matthew Keating, and Glenn comes up out of the line. But he looks like he might have shuffled into the. Maybe into the, the back row. Yeah, he has, and Matt Gillette has gone over to left centre. Kalis with it. Now, here is Mitchell, pops it up. Mateo a fin, Mateo a stand, Mateo a pass. Might have gone forward off Keating, the high mark. That's forward, mate. That's forward. Yeah, 
I'm not going to argue with Archer. Highmarsh, his face says that you're wrong. But uh, it went. I thought it went forward off the hand of Keating. That picture wasn't in a good line, I've got to tell you. Yeah, it's a bit deceptive. There's no doubt it came off, off his left hand and in a forward in, position. Wait for the out. A great chance here for Brisbane. They'll win the scrum. 42 out from their own line. Centre field. Coming into the final 10 minutes of this game. So, Winterstein. Right on the halfway line. Robson, one of the chief tacklers. This is Gillette. And there goes the ball. Was that a steal? There certainly was more than one in it. But no, it says play on. And Kalis is going to ground. All right, big chance for the Eels to close this out here. Moin Moi. They've really got a seize upon this and control the last 10 minutes. So Mitchell, for Heimars, and then Matteo Vakini and Chris Keating will play the ball on the 30 metre line. Right in the middle of the ground. Playing it to Mitchell. Mitchell comes on to Heimars, to Matteo, to Reddy. Reddy trying to break free, standing, looking to offer the ball. Had time to run an auction on it. Plays the ball back to Inu. They're 15 from the line. Matteo, Robson, decoy Moimoy. Moi. Gone to Hay. Puts a kick in behind for Luke Dead in goal. 20 metre restart. Well, it was nice lead up from Parramatta, especially down this left side. The tip on on a couple of occasions from Nathan Kalis. The second one, they went wider to Joel Reddy. With Jared Hayne looping around to the right hand side. Again, I'm not a big fan of the grubber kick Matt end over board. end. Jack. Run two dead too often as Brisbane now bring it forward. Two, move. Up there, boys, lock in, lock in, lock in. Played by Tio. Here is Maguire with Mitchell hanging around the legs. Played on the 40 metre line, Ben Hunt, Peter Wallace, Peter Wallace, Corey Norman. He's gone on to Sam Fide. And Fide plays the ball under Reddy's tackle. Dummy from Hunt. Taken by Keating. That's the last. It's gone to Wallace. Puts it through the hands. It's on to the captain, Parker. Got under a tackle. Got it away. It's with Maguire. He chops away from Jonathan Wright. Heimars is giving directions for players to stay out. He gets the ball away, Maguire. That's got to be a knock-on in there against Brisbane. Parramatta's got the ball. Gee, Ten metres out. I thought Nathan Kalis may have made a tackle on a support man who hadn't got the football. In fact, Peter Wallace. The referees disagree, fortunately for Parramatta. As Nathan Kalis takes it across to the right-hand side. Driven sideways by Gillette. Mitchell then for Matt Keating. Three, Matt. We've got, what have we got out there now? We've got as many as four dummy halves out there playing for Parramatta. Matt Keating, Anthony Mitchell, Chris Keating and Jeff Robson. They could all be classified as dummy halves and have been used as such at some stage through the year. Matteo de Berth. Berth found an opening. He sprints down to the 30. He kicks. He runs around Hoffman. Yao Yi comes from nowhere. But Berth had scored. Luke Berth had scored his 107th try. Now he's five short of Brett Kenny. That's brilliant. Oh, can't do this. Mate when you least expected, who do you look to? You look to Luke Burt. Well, he's uh, the ultimate professional. Matteo has been so dangerous tonight in the middle of the field. Look at that offload there. And Burt's come off his wing to support in the middle of the field. He too has got the chip and chase. He decides early, then backs his pace. Yeah, yeah, he comes from the bleachers. But Burt is able to get a grip on it and touch down. This won't be a problem. Yeah, most importantly, coming off his wing to capitalise on the work from Matteo. He, he kicked early, and he kicked away from Yao Yi coming across, and the green light goes up next to the posts. Yeah, just 
Yeah, yeah, but Tony, I just talking about three or four times he said to Brisbane, made us too late, I'd made the decision. I'm wondering whether it's down the other end. Welcome back to Suncorp Stadium. If you're a Parramatta supporter, you're probably probably breathing a bit easier as far as carrying on in this competition is concerned. Luke Bird has scored, and he's about to attempt conversion. But I, I've heard the referee, Tony Archer, say to a comment from Brisbane's Corey Parker, I think, it was too late, mate. I'd made the call. I'd made the call. And I'm, I'm just wondering what he's talking about. As Luke Bird converts his own try, he's now three tries short of Brett Kenny. He scored 107 tries. Wally Lewis, sideline. Boy, you've got to pay the, a pile of credit to Luke Bird as well. In the Kino replay, puts the chip over the top. This guy hasn't been in the game all night long. The Broncos have simply been targeting Christian Inu. He's decided to get into the game himself, and it appears as though that is the game winner for the Eels. 24-14, while with four to, uh, six to go. Well, Joel Reddy's knocked on here. So Brisbane will pack the scrum very quickly. As they do so, the short restart successful. A good play for teams late, of late. I'm still wondering about that conversation that Archer was having with Brisbane after Burt had scored the try. After match investigation will probably tell us what it was all about. It was almost like Archer was apologising. Well, Ray, as I said at the time, I'm, I'm wondering whether it was they were claiming that Peter Wallace in backing up on the inside was taken early by Nathan Kalis as, Corey, as the fullback Hoffman wide stepping, just 12 out. If they can score here, they're back in it again. There's Parker inquiring, finding Fide in the middle. He got rid of two and he looks to unload but it's a look of dismay on his face when there wasn't a support runner in place but Chris Curley has been, been busted Chris, he's right got a very back. heavy gash right in the back. above his right eye it's been good tonight too Chris Keating you can see it's like pouring out a fairly lengthy one they need to get him back in the line now because play on so Ben Hunt to Peter Wallace, and there's a decoy for Hoffman, and Hoffman is tackled by the number nine, Matt Keating, but Peter Wallace goes to Gillette, and Gillette is held. Two metres from the line, not even that. They've got one left on this set. So from Tio to Wallace, he'll kick to Falau's side. He does that, ready and Falau. Falau wins the contest. Throws the pass away for Fide. He's under the coat. He's oh, lost it. He's lost it. He's lost the, the ball. Whether well, it's a knock on from Israel Falau and the ground in Mali. Well, you heard that. We're going back to see whether Israel Falau has knocked on and then at the grounding. But from Sam Fide's reaction, which has continued as you can see, a little shake of the head confirms he hasn't got the football down. Deliberately for Falau. Joel Reddy does his best. Flicks it out, fall out. The and then it's Matt Keating coming in on the far side who may have saved the day for Parramatta. In fact, no, it was already coming out beforehand. Yeah, it was Hindmarsh got him from side on. Hindmarsh tackles him low and I think gets a right arm in there to knock that free. That's desperation stuff from the Parramatta side. He hasn't got anywhere near getting the ball down. Well, it was desperation stuff at the other end, wasn't it, for Antonio Winterstein? Similar situation under the posts. Knock on by Thiday. That's against the attacking side in goal. So it's a 20-meter restart. What's Hindmarsh here? Always there. Slaps at the ball. Slaps at it again. Knocks it free. Nathan Hindmarsh, Rabbits. How many tackles has he made? 52. And here we are in minute number 76. And he's racing back and saving the day under the post. Horro taken awkwardly by Brisbane, but a good piece of refereeing by Tony Archer. Yeah, there were hands up around the head and the neck, but Horro was falling into it. Chris Keating bleeding profusely from that head wound. Joel Reddy 
He'll play it 40 meters away from the Brisbane line. Moy Moy, who in some ways is lucky to be in this game. Ivan Henjak with a couple of replacements to come on. And Hain puts it dead. Offside, 24 to 14. So it's looking as though Parramatta are going to live to fight another week. And that will be at home against the Tigers. Who we have on Sunday against the Panthers. Can't wait for that one Sunday. I've got my car parked at Campbelltown already. Winterstein, Hunt, Parker, Parker on to Norman. Norman steps, he steps on his right foot, looks for support. It comes through Hunt. He gets it back for Hoffman. Hoffman taken by Mitchell. Hunt again. Wallace now. Wallace really couldn't do anything because Yao Yi had put himself so adjacent to him. This is Falau on the 30 meter line. Both coaches have now used their interchanges. Two and a half minutes to go. Maguire, 22 meters out from the Parramatta line. And it's Norman who's held by Moy Moy and Keating. 12 metres away from the line. With just over two minutes to go, Wallace out to Parker on the five day. They must score, go for now. Takes a bucket and gets the ball back. I thought he would have gone straight to this fellow, Yao Yi. Comes off Parramatta. Was he onside? Ball dropped on the ground. Picked up by Manor. Referee says play on. Tim Manor to play the ball. Well, a good read there. I think it was Christian Inu who came in and just put Falau off when he saw that the overlap was or had been developed. Lockyer looking on. Maybe two weeks on the sideline with that rib problem. They're, they're nasty things. Can't come back too early. There's Moy Moy. Minute and a half to go. Parramatta. Hanging on to their season by the skin of their teeth. Tim Manor. A dogged performance again by him. Heidmarsh. Again, an incredible effort. He stretches the boundaries of humanity, doesn't he? As this ball bounces badly for Hoffman. And Paramount has put a quick chase on it. They're trying to get him in goal. No, Hoffman got back. Horro's been outstanding for Paramount. Oh! Yao Yi plays it for Hoffman. And Hoffman out to the 30 metre line. Cronulla and the Roosters shortly on Friday night. Bundy Red football. Here's Wallace inside. That's Winterstein. Nine metres from halfway. As Wallace puts a kick in, it came off Mateo. It's play on for Felini Mateo. He gives it to Mitchell. On the move. Anthony Mitchell. Did he ground the ball? Yes, he did. The joy on the face says it all. Mitchell, this youngster who's made this entry into the top grade in maybe the most difficult of circumstances, has scored on debut. And it's one he will always remember. Peter Wallace kicking for himself. Valeti Mateo threw the boot out. Carrying it in the right arm. It's not a lot of the try scorer. But he's, he's looked good tonight. He's looked sharp. And what a way to finish. Daniel Anderson, he extracted a lot of comment this week with resting Daniel Mortimer and making some changes. I think it's fair to say it's been justified from the performance tonight from the players in those positions. I like your choice of words. What a way to finish. You could also say what a way to start. Well, let's hope it's the first of many. Yeah, Anthony Mitchell. A youngster from Townsville. They breed plenty of them, hard. don't they? Oh, they Good do. footballers. It's like a conveyor belt of footballers that keep coming out of the rock. Well, Luke Burt 
who sealed the game earlier, took himself to within three tries of Brett Kenny's club record. He converts the try scored by this young fellow, Anthony Mitchell, who was running around in park football until last weekend. It's 30 plays, 14 at the conclusion. Parramatta have run out victorious by 16 points. Their third win from 13 trips across the border, most recently. And now the pressure on other teams as the weekend unfolds. A win somewhere, a fix somewhere, somewhere else. Higher up the ladder, low on the ladder. South Sydney under pressure now to come up with a victory for them to stay alive. So too Newcastle. And where will Brisbane be at the end of this weekend? Only time will tell. The Nathan Kalis story of two captains tonight. Nathan has broken the all-time captaincy record. Started in the job in 2001 under Brian Smith's elevation. He's broken Brad Fittler's record tonight and celebrates with a victory. While Corey Parker has led the Broncos for the 12th time. And he's come up with one victory in 12 leaderships. So, as I said, the tale of two captains. Next, we'll find out who is the $1,000 Channel 9 man of the match. And then it's off to Toyota Stadium for the kickoff to the Sharks and the high-flying roosters. This is Nine's Friday Night Football.